In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn these three boards with a few other materials from this into this, a custom wooden sign with vinyl lettering. Welcome to Projects with Steve. I am building this custom rustic wooden sign for my brother-in-law. He has recently gotten into home brewing, so his wife asked me if I would make a sign that she could give to him as a gift. The idea is that he can hang it in his man cave above his brewing equipment. The only wood I used in this project are two 1x4s that are 8 feet long and one 1x2 that is also 8 feet long. The first step was to cut the wood for the planks on the sign. I cut four pieces of the 1x4s 22 and a half inches long. I used this length because I wanted the overall width of the sign to be 24 inches. The frame that I build later will add one and a half inches to the overall width, giving it the overall 24 inch width. Once I cut the four planks, I lightly sanded the edges to get rid of any burrs left from the saw blade. I then cut two pieces of the 1x4 that were just under the 14 and a quarter height. I cut mine at 14 inches. These two pieces of wood will be used on the back of the sign to connect the four planks together. With the side of the sign that you want to be the front facing down, I use wood glue and brad nails to attach these two pieces of wood to the sign. The wood glue will give it most of its strength while the most important job for the brad nails is to hold the wood together until the glue dries. If you like this type of content, please hit the like button. This tells YouTube that I'm a good guy and they will recommend my videos to others. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I'm still a young channel my goal is to hit 200 subscribers this year. If you can help me out with that, I would greatly appreciate it. Once we hit 200 subscribers, I would choose one of my followers and I'll mail them a Projects with Steve gift. I used an orbital sander to sand the sign before attaching the frame. This allowed me to sand all the way into the corners with the sander. If I sanded after the frame was attached, I wouldn't be able to do this. I built the frame for the sign out of the 1x2 piece of wood. All the wood I used for this project is pine. I do like to use a little higher quality pine for the frame because I want the wood to be straight and I prefer it to have minimal knots. The inside dimension of the frame is 22 and a half inches by 14 and a quarter inches. Here's the sign now with the frame attached to it. I attached the four pieces of the frame using wood glue and brad nails.
For the stain, I'm using Minwax stain in the ebony color. I've used this color in many of my projects. And I think it gives a great look, whether you are going for a slightly distressed look or not. It is an oil-based stain, so use gloves when applying it. For this application, I applied the stain with a brush. I then let the stain sit for about 10 minutes and then went back with a cloth and wiped the excess stain off. If you want the wood to be darker, you can let the stain sit longer or you can apply a second coat. Here's what it looked like once the stain had dried for a bit. Depending on the look you are going for, you can stop here. But I'm going for a slightly distressed look, giving it a bit more age and character. To do this, I'm using a file to remove some of the stain and wood around the edges of the frame. I continue to move the file along the edges of the frame removing a little material at a time until I'm satisfied with the look. I do focus on the corners of the frame because this is where I feel a sign that has been used and weathered for a while would show the most wear. Once I'm satisfied with the look the file has given me, I take a sanding sponge to knock down any of the burrs left behind. I also wipe the entire sign down to make it clean before the polyurethane is applied. For polyurethane, I use Varathane's triple thick polyurethane with the satin finish. I like this polyurethane because it is water-based and because you only need to do one coat for this application. I applied the polyurethane with a brush. Once the polyurethane had dried, I went back and sanded the entire sign with high grit sandpaper. This gives the sign a very smooth finish to the touch. Here's what it looked like once the sign had dried, but before the vinyl lettering was applied. Here, you can better see what the distressed edges look like. The vinyl lettering is going to be cut out using my Cricut. I created the design in a publishing software, and then I imported it into the Cricut Design Space software as a JPEG file. To cut this design on a Cricut, you need to have the larger 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. Also, the tap that is used as the apostrophe in this design could not fit on the cutting mat in its final location because it would make the overall height more than 12 inches. I had to cut this in a different location on the mat and then place it in its final correct location when I applied it to the sign. Here is the large 12 by 24 inch mat with the white vinyl laid out on it. I just got my Cricut for Christmas, so I've not had it very long. I've only done a couple smaller projects so far on it, so this is by far the largest cut that I have done. So far, I think my Cricut is awesome, 
I have the Explore Air 2. Like I said, I've not had it very long, but I feel like there are so many things that I can create with it. I'm excited to create all the other projects that are currently in my head once I have time. If you do not have a Cricut or another vinyl cutter, there are people that will do the vinyl cutting for you and simply mail you the vinyl completely ready to be applied to your sign. I have done this a few times in the past before I got my Cricut. I went on eBay and found people to do this for me. You can find people that you can submit your custom designs to and also people that are selling their own designs that are ready to be mailed to you. It just depends what you want. Here's how the sign turned out. I didn't cover it in this video, but transferring the vinyl letters, especially the smaller letters, to the transfer paper and then onto the wooden sign was very tedious and took a lot of concentration to not mess it up. I used clear contact paper as my transfer paper. I would seen online other people using this instead of the Cricut transfer paper. If you have a Cricut and have used both the contact paper and the Cricut transfer paper, let me know in the comments section below if the Cricut transfer paper is better and worth purchasing. I feel like I wish that the contact paper was more sticky than it was. Well, I hope you like the sign. I hope Dr. Ben likes it as well. Let me know your thoughts and any questions you have in the comment section below. Please give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel, Projects with Steve, so you do not miss out on any of my other projects and videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at Projects with Steve. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next project.